Radha Krishna Padara Vinda Bhajana Nandena Matalika Vande Rupa Sanatana Raguyaka Sri Jiva Gopalaka Vande Rupa Sanatana Raguyaka Sri Jiva Gopalaka. Translation. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the six Goswamis, namely Sri Sanatan Goswami, Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, and Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami who are very expert in scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles for the benefit of all human beings. Thus they're honored all over the three worlds and they're worth taking shelter of because they're absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Radha, and Krishna. Just a little adjustment, okay. And this thing is plugged into the mains, is it? How long will it last? From now? <laughs> we don't want to conk out in, in mid uh, program. Okay, devotees, so uh, yesterday we began the introduction and, well, we, we did a, a good part of the, nectar, uh, of the introduction. Actually, out of 12 verses of the Mang Mangala Charana, out of the 12, we did 10. So that's good. And so now we're going on to the very important verse, the uh, uh, Paribha Sutra, Paribha Sutra, that very foundational verse, which is defining the subject matter of nectar of devotion. So, yes, we, of course, we, we did read the verse and we read the, uh, the translation. Let, let's just read it again. Let's read it again. Just so we've got it clear what we are talking about. So, yes, this is, this verse is written by Srila Rupa Goswami. And it is defining what is the subject matter. Uh oh, excuse me. Alibo. Instagram Guru Maharaj, please. What about it? Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> as usual, a hiccup or two, but it's all right. Here we are. Okay, so here we go. Uh, yes, so we are going on. We, we last night we just we read verse eleven, which is the Paribha Sutra of. Uh, of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Nectar of Devotion. 
Uh, let us just read it again to remind ourselves, and then we'll, we'll go into it in, in some detail. <clears throat> so here we go. And yabilashita shunyam jnana karmad yanavritam anukulyena krishnanu shilanam bhaktier utama. And there's a couple of translations we read last night. Let's just read the main one from Chaitanya Charitamrita. When first class devotional service develops, one must be devoid of all, excuse me, all material desires, knowledge obtained by monistic philosophy, and fruit of action. The devotee must constantly serve Krishna favorably as Krishna desires. That's a very nice translation. It covers actually uh, the points which are there. So now let's go into it in detail. <clears throat> as we said, uh, this verse is defining the subject matter of nectar of devotion, which is uh, devotional service, which is actually pure devotional service. <clears throat> what is pure devotional service? And, and the translation we read, uh, there are three, at least three, <clears throat> negative considerations which come at the beginning of the verse, and then there are three positive considerations which come more, which come in the second half of the verse. So we have to look at the verse in order to really get it clear what is the definition and what must be avoid, avoided and what must be there. Yeah, we have to go through it carefully. So first of all, like we said, there's the negative considerations. What you must not do if you want your service or your activity to be pure devotional service. Certain things must not be there. So, well, the, the first two lines, let me just read the first two lines again. And yabilashita shunyam gyarnakamad yanavritam. So, let, let's first of all look at jnana and karma. So they, they must be, as Rupa Goswami says, shunya. Shunya means zero. Yeah, in Sanskrit and, and North Indian languages. So your jnana must be zero. Jnana, of course, means knowledge. So what, what's the idea? The idea is that any tendency you have towards impersonal type of knowledge, uh, yes, that, that sort of gyan, mayavad, that must be zero. If there are impersonal tendencies showing themselves uh, as you're attempting to render devotional service, it will not be pure devotional service. So no jnana, no impersonal uh, philosophical ideas, then no karma. Uh, now what, now these words of course have to some degree different meanings in terms of context, but in this context karma means no materialistic religion. No materialistic religiosity must be there. No praying to the demigods for money or health or whatever. And no, no praying to anybody for these things. No, no materialistic religiosity. 
So those are two parts, and the third part is an yabilashita shunyan. Anya abilash, any other desire. Anya means other, abilash means desire. So any other desire uh, of a materialistic nature, a non Krishna conscious nature, must be zero. And if it is, there's a chance that you are rendering pure devotional service. So the, those are three negative considerations. Now here are three positive considerations, things which must be there if your endeavors are to be considered pure devotional service. Incidentally, Ram, I don't have your... Oh, it's there. Excuse me. Okay, sorry, devotees. Right, so three things must be there. Uh, three things. First thing is... Well, the li let me just read those lines. Anukulyena Krishnanu Shilanam Bhaktir Uttama. Bhaktir Uttama. Uttama means... Uh, on the highest level. Well, literally it means beyond ignorance, actually. That's literally what, what it means. So, or in other words, pure. Pure devotional service. So, three considerations. First one is Krishna. That whatever you're doing, which we are considering, is it pure devotional service or what is it? It has to be for Krishna. Uh, you cannot do pure devotional service for a demigod. You cannot do pure devotional service, I mean certainly not for your country or your family or all these <coughs> types of, uh, of entities. Must be for Krishna. Uh, but, but, then here's another, a little further consideration, that Krishna, Krishna is never alone. Um, for example, we, we render service to Krishna under the, the guidance, the direction of the spiritual master. We serve the spiritual master. As, you know, we sing every day in Guru, in Guru Puja, Guru Vandana song, Sri Guru Charana Padma, Kevala Bhakati Sadma, the lotus feet of the spiritual master are the only way by which we can achieve pure devotional service. So, this term Krishna, the activity, the service must be for Krishna, then it also includes, it certainly includes the spiritual master, the previous acharyas, founder acharya, but in a broader sense, it includes all the devotees. You cannot really separate them from Krishna, because Krishna is never alone. Uh, and then, it's not only Krishna, Krishna, but all the different expansions, incarnations, avatars, and so on and so forth. Uh, these different forms of the Lord, uh, who are all one with Krishna, they're expansions of Krishna, but they're also different. Achintya Bed Abed Tattva. Uh, each one has their own program, and like, for example, Lord Ram is somewhat different from Lord Krishna, although they are the same person. So, uh, yes, so like this. Uh, when, when, when it is said that the activity must be for Krishna, it includes Krishna, it includes the devotees, and it includes Krishna's expansions. 
So as long as your service is being done for at least one person out of those categories, there's a possibility you are doing pure devotional service as long as the other considerations, requirements are met. So, okay, it must be for Krishna uh, and his devotees and expansions, but then there are two other very important considerations. Anukulyena, it must be favorable. It must be favorable. This favorability uh, has two divisions. There are two separate parts to this favorability. One is that your attitude, when you are doing that service, your attitude towards the service, towards the Lord, the devotees like that, you must have a favorable attitude. That I'm doing this to please Krishna, not as may happen sometimes, that, for example, if, uh, I mean, just this may sound a little humorous, but it's actually uh, quite possibly, I mean, it's a, surely a reality sometimes. It is Sunday. Imagine. It is Sunday. And it is the Sunday program. And the Sunday program comes to an end. And the feast is served. What a nice feast. How wonderful. And now it's getting into the evening. It's getting into the evening. If, you know, if the, the Sunday program is a kind of late afternoon type program like that. So now it might be seven, it might even be eight o'clock. And everyone's leaving. And there you are sitting with your prasadam and discussing with your friend devotees and then you realize oh everyone's gone it's just me left and then out you go out the door and who do you run into but the temple president who says that oh i'm so glad you're here i thought everyone had gone you know, we have loads of big pots which are really dirty from cooking the feast. And we need some surrendered soul to, to wash the pots at eight o'clock at night. A collection of pots. And then, <clears throat> I, I have seen it happen. Because when I was, anyway, at different stages in my <clears throat> I wouldn't call it career, but my life in Krishna consciousness, I've had to organize the washing of the pots on Sunday afternoon <laughs> and, and other similar activities and, and caught a person just like we were saying. And sometimes they're okay, but there are other occasions I hate to say I've witnessed where they get upset and they say, well, th this and that and various other things. And, and even some get a little angry, a little disturbed. So that means, what does that mean? It means that their, their attitude is not really favorable. They may agree, but if someone agrees begrudgingly, that's not a favorable attitude. So that must be there. That must be there. A favorable attitude on the part of the devotee who is doing the service. And then secondly, it must, it must actually please Krishna. It must actually please Krishna. Uh, yeah. In other words, you, you may have a very favorable attitude, but if the activity you're performing 
supposedly for the pleasure of Krishna is some, you know, just some speculation or something like that. It's not really valid devotional service then it's not going to please Krishna. And even if your attitude is very favorable, it cannot be considered to really be devotional service or certainly not pure devotional service. And in this regard, I can tell you a story uh, which was told to us so many years ago by His Holiness Giriraj Maharaj. Uh, he, he was in Bombay, Mumbai, uh, enrolling people to become life members of ISKCON and donate and get books and like that, get involved in Krishna consciousness. So one day he went to the office of one businessman and he was ushered into the businessman's office and the businessman saw that, oh, a Hare Krishna devotee. You're familiar with this story, I suppose. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're familiar, I mean, you're a Hare Krishna devotee. How wonderful. I'm so happy to see you. Please come in. Please have a seat. Uh, would you like some water? Can I get, can we get some juice? Would you like some milk? <clears throat> and can I donate something? <laughs> Is it all right if I donate something? <laughs> so, you know, in other words, it looks like things are going very well. <laughs> and then the man said, so, they brought I don't know what for him to Maharaj to drink. And the man said, you know, I will have a cup of tea. <laughs> so in came, <laughs> in came a cup of tea. And the man pulled out of his top drawer of his office like a very beautiful, ornate silver casket. You know, just a little sort of small box, but very nice. And he opened it, and it was full of tulsi leaves, right? And the man, and the man, you know, he did put whatever in his tea, some sugar or milk or whatever, and then a, a few teaspoonfuls of tulsi leaves. And he said, "Yes, oh, I love Krishna so much. Whenever I drink my tea." I must put Tulsi in. <laughs> so I, I remember so vividly Giriraj Maharaj telling us the story as, as a classic example of favorable attitude, but unfavorable, unacceptable activity. So it's not really devotional service, it's certainly not pure de devotional service, it's some mixture, it's, it's some mixture. Uh, yes, so, and then another example of a different type that, which was also given to us by Giri Raj Maharaj, but it's, it's a well-known example, is that when when uh, Lord Nishingadev was fighting with Hirani Kashipu, or in so many cases, Lord Ram was fighting with Ravana, and, and Krishna was fighting with so many demons, then in many cases, Krishna gets great enjoyment out of that fighting. Yeah, he, he enjoys that fighting. In fact, we are told that when, that just before Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha uh, were, were sent from the spiritual world down to the material world, Jai and Vijay, that whole story, the Lord had been thinking that 
I want a good fight. I want a good fight. But here, in the spiritual world, if I fight, if I ask one of my devotees to fight with me, they're not going to really fight. Like really fight, as if their life depends on it. They're not going to fight like that. Oh, they may fight a little bit, but they'll just let me win, of course. Uh, so, and in the material world, they're not very powerful. One, you know, one flick of the finger, <laughs> and that's the end of even the biggest demon. So I need some special associate, like a Kshatriya, a Vaikuntha Kshatriya, extremely powerful, to go down and then lose the mentality of a devotee, forget about me, and become my enemy, and really fight with me, and give me a good, as, you know, as good a fight as is possible. So Jay and Vijay, they were Vaikuntha Kshatriyas, and they went down, and uh, Srila Jiva Goswami explains, explains that well, in one place, in what? Krishna's, either Krishna Sandhaba or Bhakti Sandhaba, Srila Jiva Goswami indicates that there's a possibility their bodies was kind of spiritual. They had that sort of power. But otherwise, he just says that they were extremely empowered people. And so they gave the Lord uh, a fight as as much as it's possible to give him a fight and that pleased him so but we should not think that therefore Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha were performing devotional service <laughs> the Lord was pleased very good let's fight yes he was happy but because of their attitude not being favorable, it cannot be considered to be, well, what to speak of de a pure devotional service, it's not, it's not devotional service. It's not actually devotional service. So that's the second consideration. And it's a very important one. Uh, then the third consideration is Anu Shilanam. Anu Shilanam uh, means like ongoing, ongoing, not not interrupted by by some other type of thing of a different nature. In this case, of course, it's devotional service. So, in order for our attempts at, at devotional service to possibly be considered pure devotional service, they should be uninterrupted. Not on, but then off, and then, you know, stop and start. They actually need to be uninterrupted in order to be pure devotional service. Now, maybe there'll be mixed devotional service otherwise, but in order to be pure, they have to be uninterrupted. And we can give an example there that sometimes devotees, oops, I have to change Instagram. Excuse me, this will take a minute. We will return.
has to come back online. <coughs> Excuse me. It may be a little better to do it this way. Aha. Uh -huh. Oops, okay. All right. All right. So, yeah, where were we? We were talking about ongoing, unbroken, in order to be pure. Yeah, it may be mixed, something else may be mixed devotional service, but, but the whole idea here, the whole idea of nectar of devotion is somehow come to the level of pure devotional, pure devotional service. So I can give you an interesting little example. I, you'll, you'll find this interesting. You'll definitely find this interesting. Some years ago, several years ago, uh, it m could even be 10 or so, one, one uh, disciple of mine, first initiated, wanted to get second initiation. So, uh, there's a process, he went through the process and he got interviewed, maybe, I th it must have been a few, a couple of times at least, by the, the then initiation committee, which is different from today's. You'll be happy to know as we go through the story. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, the final interview, the final interview, the uh, one devotee in the committee, uh, the, the, the whole committee is there, but one, uh, one member of the committee said that, uh, you know, I don't think you're ready. I don't think you're ready for second initiation. And our devotee asked, I'm sure in a very humble way, why can you give me some tips or explanations and like that? And the, the member of the committee said, because you were at the Bollywood concert the other night at, you know, some place in Durban. You were there. And, and our devotee said, how, do you, how did you know that? And the committee member said, I saw you there. <laughs> Anyway, oh dear, the things that happen sometimes. Yes, so, I mean, that's an example, but I think you know the type of thing we're talking about. The type of thing we're talking about is like, you know, we're doing, we're chanting our rounds, uh, like typically it would be more for someone who's living at home, we're chanting our rounds, and then our favorite television program comes on. And then, so we stop chanting and watch the program, and then continue on with our rounds. I mean, unless it was some program about Krishna consciousness, which is not so likely. Uh, or even, even the devotee might on a more advanced level, try to multitask, watch the program and chant the rounds. So anyway, that's just my little sense of humor, but uh, these things happen. Don't think they don't. And you know, it wouldn't sh surprise me too much if, if you know, some of our members sitting here right now have on occasion, you know, done something like that. I'm not accusing you, but uh, yeah. Um, ha -ha. 
Now, let's just have a look here. What are we doing here? All right. Now, uh, I'm, in regards to this, this term, Anushilanam, Anushilanam, uh, there, there is a question you're meant to answer. Where on earth is that reference? <coughs> uh, let's just see. Oh yeah, okay. Now, there's a question about uh, what is pravrati and what is nivrati. And the answer to that is on page seven in the, what is it, one, two, three, fourth paragraph. The paragraph which begins, this devotional service is a sort of cultivation. This devotional service is a sort of cultivation. In there, you'll find a discussion about pravrati and nivrati, positive and negative actions. Yeah, let me just check that I haven't missed something else. Pravrati and nivrati, 12 rasas, pravrati and nivrati, okay. Oh, and then you're also, you're also meant to uh, give the English meaning of the word anushilanam which we've just been talking about. And, and you're also meant to explain what is jnana karmadi, which we already spoke about. Yeah. You know, this adi, let me just throw in something else, a little footnote. This word adi, jnana karmadi yanavritam, adi, is generally used to indicate beginning with, beginning with, jnana uh, karmad yanavritam. Yes. So it's like impersonal philosophy and materialistic religion and other sort of connected things. It's a little different from Anya Abhilash which is just any other material desire, non-Krishna conscious. This is a little more specific. It could include things like attachment to yoga, like physical yoga, uh, which could be considered, you know, if someone is rendering devotional service, but they're, they're also doing some yoga, not, not just for exercise, but because they're feeling this will help me with my Krishna consciousness, then this is called Yoga Mishra Bhakti. Mishra meaning mixed, mixed with. Bhakti mixed with some yoga. And then there's Jnana Mishra Bhakti. Someone is doing devotional service, but as we did mention, they still have some attachment to impersonal ideas. And karma mishra, bhakti, they're trying to do devotional service, but they are, uh, they really have some interest in getting some material benefits, not just to help them in their service, but some actual material things they want. Then it's, it's called karma mishra bhakti, then there, when, when those mixtures become further developed, uh, these types of impure devotional service, then instead of being, for example, karma mishra bhakti, bhakti which is mixed with materialistic religious ideas, praying to God to get things, material things, uh, if it becomes further deteriorated, it becomes bhakti mishra karma. 
Have you heard of that one before? Bhakti Mishra, karma. It's really more karma, but it's mixed with bhakti. Bhakti Mishra. Or Bhakti Mishra, jnana. Or Bhakti Mishra, yoga. That the real focus is these other things, but some bhakti is mixed in. <coughs> so therefore, of course, it's not, it's not pure devotional service. Aha! Uh -huh. Let's see if there's some other points we should just focus on a little bit. Krishna, we focused on that. Anushilanam. Uh, pravriti, nivriti. We've mentioned that. Well, let, let us just mention that a little more clearly. Prabhupada explains here in this, uh, the paragraph we referred to at the bottom of page 7, this devotional service is a sort of cultivation, that there are activities um, which are favorable, pravriti, favorable to Krishna consciousness, and then there's nivriti, which means avoiding activities which are unfavorable to Krishna consciousness. So in our practices, as we're trying to develop a, a, and progress in our Krishna consciousness, then we do both. We do certain things which are favorable, helpful for our development in Krishna consciousness, like what we're doing right now, hearing nectar of devotion, uh, rendering service, taking part in kirtan, reading the books, chanting our rounds. These are activities are favorable and we do them. And then there are other activities which we don't do because they're unfavorable. Uh, and that's nivriti. And, and this is, for example, at least the main examples, uh, we don't do those things which are opposed to our four regulative principles. We don't eat meat, we don't take intoxication, we don't gamble, and we don't engage in illicit sex life. So that's nivriti. And, and we, we are engaged, we're actively engaged in both. If, if some possibility of engaging in some mundane activity arises, then we will actively avoid it and actively go and do something worthwhile. We'll make a point of avoiding it. We make a, po we make a point of not offending devotees. No blasphemy. We, we try to make a point get up early, follow the morning program like this, get up early and don't just sort of uh, sleep in. So this is, this, these are all different elements of nivriti, not doing things which are unfavorable. Aha. Uh -huh. So yes, and then Prabhupada goes on further actually to point out that these things um, are done with body, mind, and words. Body, mind, and words. Or perhaps we, just, we should say the order would be mind, words, body. Uh, it, it is better to actually, or no, let me say, it is worse Worse than thinking in a, an, in a not nice way about anyone, but particularly a devotee, is not as, it is not as bad to think badly as it is to speak the same thing, the same thing, to speak it openly, and then to actually do something physically as an expression of those same ideas of negativity is worse again. 
So similarly, uh, to think about serving Krishna is nice. Uh, to speak about Krishna and Krishna consciousness is better. And to actively perform devotional service is the best. So like this. There's, in Nectar of Devotion, I, I forget exactly where, I think we, we may, uh, we'll, we'll come across it, I think. Prabhupada tells the story of one devotee who was very poor and he couldn't afford anything practically, but he really wanted to serve the Lord. And one day he was in the temple and someone was giving a class and the devotee giving the class said that if you just think about serve, doing service, it's the same as doing the service. So the devotee then started a whole program of thinking of doing all wonderful sorts of service in a magnificent temple in his mind. And, and beautiful deities with beautiful clothes and jewelry and garlands and worship and just, he, was, he would just sit there and just meditate on it. But one day, a doubt entered his mind. Am I just daydreaming here? <laughs> Is it just some sort of, you know, fictitious, foolish waste of time? At, the, at that time, at that moment, in his mind, he was preparing sweet rice to be offered to his deities within his mind, on the altar within his mind. And sweet rice, of course, is best served cool. So in, in his dream, in his meditation, in his thoughts, he touched with a finger, he touched the sweet rice, but found it was still hot. And so it was like, you know, if you do something like that and you find that it's hot, you get a bit of a shock. And that's what happened in his mind. He got a bit of a shock because it was, it was hot. And it brought him back to external consciousness. And then he saw that his actual finger was burnt. And Prabhupada telling the story says that at that moment, Lord Narayan in Vaikuntha with some of his associates was watching and when, when the devotee's finger got actually burnt, Lord Narayan laughed. And he told his assistants, just go and get that person <laughs> and just bring him back here. And so the person went back to Godhead in his self-same body, which happens sometimes, but not often. Yeah, but having said that, Still, it's better to, to vocalize and then it's better again to actually do service. You can imagine, just think of this. We need to build phase, whatever, two or three. Or we need to develop things. We really need to. It's been sitting there since 1985. That's a, a while. <laughs> anyway. So, so, okay, let's say that we start some program to collect quite a few million rands to do the construction. And we go to some nice devotee's house and ask, can you please give, I don't know, shall we say, 10,000 rands. And the devotee says, ten, only 10. I, in my mind, I will give you a hundred thousand. In my mind, I'll give you a million. Because I, I just read Nectar of Devotion, what it said there. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, so, So like this, Srila Prabhupada is explaining here um, that, 
the mental culture of Krishna consciousness. In, in, the, in the devotee's mind, the devotee always thinks of the activities of the Lord. Manmana. This is mental cu cultivation. But in relationship to, to Krishna. Aha. So anyway, this is basically the explanation which is there. More or less, let's just have a look. Uh, okay, here's an interesting one. In regards to favorability, uh, the favorable attitude of the devotee. In the Damodar Leela, uh, Mother Yashoda was breastfeeding Krishna, then she saw the milk was about to boil over. So she just put him down on the ground and it was a bit of a shock for Krishna and he really didn't appreciate it at all. And she went to save the milk that was about to boil over. So here, her attitude is very favorable, but Krishna, it seems, was really not pleased at all. He broke the, the pot, she was churning the yogurt into butter in, and, and he cried and he really, it was, you could say it was something like a bit of a tantrum. So what does that mean? Does that mean Mother, Mother Yashoda was not performing pure devotional service? Well, we, we shouldn't think like that. Uh, in, in, Prabhupada discusses this and Prabhupada makes the point that she went to save the milk for Krishna. So she was doing it for Krishna and Prabhupada makes the point that in the end everyone was satisfied and Prabhupada says that Krishna gives the devotee in, in such a situation like a subtle situation is, is it going to be pleasing or not? Or to what degree? Something like that. Prabhupada says that Krishna, Krishna will give the devotee the intelligence to balance these things. Uh -huh. All right. So now, let's see. In in the text of uh, Nectar of Devotion, on it is now page 10, but yeah, it's on page 10. On page 10, the last two paragraphs of the introduction, the last two paragraphs of the whole uh, introduction. Prabhupada says in the second to last paragraph, Srila Rupa Goswami has also quoted a definition from the Narada Pancharat Pancharatra. This is the 12th verse in the um, Mangala Charana, the 12th verse. And Prabhupada gives a translation. Let me, let me just give the, the verse itself, the Sanskrit, and the translation from Chaitanya Charitamrita. So the verse, it's very famous verse, Sarvapadi Venir Muktam, Tat Paratvena Nirmalam, Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam, Bhaktiya Uchyate. Bhaktiya, Bhakti obviously, Uchyate. Bhakti Uchite means this is called devotional service, what's being described here. So bhakti or devotional service means engaging all our senses in the service of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the master of all the senses. When the spirit soul renders service unto the Supreme, there are two side effects. One, one is one is freed from all material designations, and the second is that simply by being employed in the service of the Lord, 
when senses are purified. Yeah. So, this is also part of the pic picture. Um, the the uh, Paribas Sutra and Yabhilashita Shunyam is, of course, the essence of it all. It really is. But this is just a little, you know, expansion, a little embellishment just to um, bring, bring home some, some sort of similar points uh, which are in harmony. Yeah, so there too, when we engage our senses in the, the service of the Lord of the senses, Rishikesh, Rishika Isha. Rishika means the senses and Isha means the Lord or Master. Rishika Isha. Uh, Rish, Rishikena, Rishikesha Sevanam. Rishikena, Rishika means the senses, and Aina is the, the Sanskrit suffix meaning by, by doing something. Rishikena, by engaging the senses, Rishikesha Savana, in the service of the Lord, of the Master of the Senses. This is called Bhakti. And it has two uh, results. One is sarva upadi vinir muktam. Uh, sarva all upadi. Upadi means a designation. Designation, of course, means I'm a man, you're a woman, I am an old man, you are a young man. <laughs> These are all designations in terms of our physical and material condition. So, and veneer muktam. So, sarva upadi, all those designations, veneer muktam, we become liberated from them. And tat parat vena nirmalam means uh, with, with the sole purpose of serving Krishna. That's all. Yes. Nirmalam, without in, completely free from any undesirable things. So this is what happens. If we, if we engage in pure devotional service and yabhilashita shunyam, if we really engage properly in pure devotional service, then the result will come that we'll become free from all, from all undesirable things and uh, we'll, we'll become purified through in, uh, purified, our senses will become purified, Krishnaized by being engaged in, in the service of, of the Lord. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Hare Krishna. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else I should touch on. Let me see. Let me say last thing. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's see. Okay. Well, Prabhupada has mentioned on a number of occasions uh, in, in places in the preface, towards in the later part of the preface, Sri Sri Radharadna, Sri Giri Govardhan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu King. In the later part of the preface, and he's also mentioned in the introduction that all these things have to be done uh, under the supervision, direction, guidance of the spiritual master. And that 
if, if one gets that opportunity by the grace of the Lord to get the association of a bona fide spiritual master and get that sort of direction and guidance, then one is extremely fortunate. So this, uh, when, when we go on to the, uh, the different rules and regulations which make up the program of, of devotional service, particularly of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, um, the practice of devotional service according to rules and regulations, we'll see that the first three rules Ah, well, the first one is accept a spiritual master. The second one is um, follow or be initiated by him. And the third one is to render service uh, under his instruction. So this is a very important element in this, the whole picture that we've been discussing here of Anyabhilashita Shunyam. One can learn to, to develop, cultivate that quality of devotional service under the guidance of the spiritual master, uh, and not otherwise, not otherwise, not just by a do-it-yourself process. So that should always be remembered. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki Thank <laughs> you.